Previously on Pokemon Horizons, the Rising Volt Talkers arrive to Kirikami to search for Briar and learn more about Terrapagos. But when they meet with Carmine, she doesn't exactly tell them the information until their caretaker reveals she's at the Crystal Pool. What secrets will they learn about Terrapagos? Let's find out now. This week, Liko, Roy, Freed, and Dot make their way to the Eternal Pass to meet with Briar, but along the way, Ticketink finds some iron she wants to expand on her hammer. But when a wild bombardier starts to terrorize Ticketink, they make off with their iron, forcing Ticketink to split from the group. With Ticketink dead set on retrieving their iron, will she be able to get it back? Let's find out. It's no secret that one of the biggest complaints about Pokemon Horizons is the lack of focus on the other group's Pokemon, and today's episode gives us a chance to expand more on Ticketink as a character. We learn that Ticketink is very similar similar to Dot in a lot of ways. While Dot puts all her energy into her Needle Thing streams, Tinkatink focuses on hammering any iron it can find. Roy even points out that Tinkatink's hammer has even grown recently too. And since the story focuses on Tinkatink's love for metal, we see them journey throughout the Eternal Pass just to find this metal plate so they can upgrade their hammer. This gives us the opportunity to explore the Eternal Pass before we get to the Crystal Lake. And here we see a ton of wild Pokemon that adds life to this area. Like when Timber and Tinkatink bump into each other and they take each other's objects by mistake. I'll admit that was a funny exchange. We also see Yanmega, Bonsly, Mecargo. Basically, it's a bunch of Pokemon we don't see too often. But we mostly focus on not just one, but two, Bombardier. Just like it states in the Scarlet and Violet Pokedex, Bombardier likes to cause mischief and throw objects just to terrorize people. And since this Pokemon is targeting Tink and Tink more particularly, we see what kind of havoc they like to bring. They throw water balloons, a pair of dentures, which, where did that come from? But we discover Bombardier actually has a nest filled with various objects. And while Tink and Tink searches for its metal plate, Dot arrives just in time to distract this Pokemon with Quaxwell. And this is where the episode starts to get more interesting because Bombardier manages to terrestrial without a Terra Orb. This was very unexpected, but it does something the series has yet to do. In Scarlet and Violet, wild Pokemon can terrestrialize throughout Paldea and Kitikami, so here we're seeing this occur for the first time without a trailer. And for me, this introduction to wild terrestrialized Pokemon, it saves this episode from feeling pretty basic. It's very surprising, and without Dot being able to terrestrialize thanks to the additional Bombardier, it makes the battle more intensifying, especially with the new music. Once more, we do get a evolution from this episode, because now that Tinkatink has successfully upgraded its hammer, it evolves into Tinkatuff, and together with Quaxwell, they managed to take down the two Bombardiers, which the animation was stunning. Quaxwell really held their own early in the fight, and when Tinkatuff joins the battle, they even sport a new move, Play Rough, and they really managed to knock some serious damage to this Pokemon. I'm glad that Dot and Tinkatuff managed to get some time to shine. While Liko, Roy, Freed, and the other Rising Volt attackers take a backseat, the story allows itself to progress these characters while adding some new lore to this mysterious region. And for Ticketuff exclusively, it seems they're not done with wanting to expand their hammer. Could this be foreshadowing its other evolution? We'll just have to see. We give Ticketuff's hammer wasn't made in a day. A 7 out of 10. So, who wants to play Wackadiglet? Diglett? 